This video is sponsored by Brush Galaxy. Okay, welcome to another iPad drawing tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to explore how to create perspective when we don't have geometric shapes to play with and therefore we can't use lines and straight lines and vanishing points in quite the same way. So if you're doing a natural environment with organic details and elements, you need to rely upon something other than that vanishing point to give you a sense of distance. So if you want to follow along in the same way, I'm using the app Procreate. I've opened an A4 canvas in terms of the brushes, I'm just using the 6B pencil. I've got it set to 50% size and 30% opacity. And the colour I've gone for, as you can see here on the colour disc, ignore all the colours and everything else. We're only really interested in where that circle is placed on the colour disc. It doesn't even matter what colour we've got because it's so desaturated and it's not quite solid black, but it's not getting up into the lighter colours. So it's somewhere a little bit less than light grey, but it's not as dark as complete black. It's just trying to emulate that kind of charcoal, natural pencil look. So there are three ways that we can really concentrate to give us the illusion of distance when we're looking at natural environments. The first one, if we have a vanishing point, and it may well be a rolling horizon, it's not necessarily going to be a straight line. The first one is going to be obvious in a sense, but it's going to be the size of the objects. But that also can be confusing because you may know roughly what the size of a building should look like, Therefore, it's, if it's a really small looking building, then the chances are it's in the distance. And there are some similar things. For example, if you had a tree, now I'm just doing a, a rough shaped tree and we see it here compared to it in the distance. We know that if it's a small version, it's chances are it's further away. But you'll probably notice another trick that is necessary for this. And it's not just a trick, it is something that you will observe in nature, is that the further something is away from you, the nearer the horizon line it is going to appear. And that doesn't really matter whether it's a floating cloud or whether it's something on the land itself, whether it's a rock or a series of rocks. The nearer to you, the bigger it's going to be because it's nearer to you, but also it's going to be lower down compared to that horizon. So a really foreground cloud, for example, may be further away, but it's also going to be bigger. So if we would take something like an egg shape, and you're unlikely to see a load of eggs naturally lying around in the landscape, but it's just to get the point across. Let's imagine that this perhaps oversized egg shape, but as it gets further into the distance, it's going to get smaller certainly, but it's also going to get further off into the horizon as well. You can create lots of multiples of the same shape and you're going to create that illusion of distance even if they're not all exactly the same size, it doesn't really matter. So you can have a series of small ones that could be quite close to each other, for example. But if all you ever get in the distance is smaller objects, then you'll successfully suggest distance without really having to do very much else. Now, it's not to say you can't also have smaller things in the foreground, but the exclusion of big shapes in the distance, I think, is really the thing that sells the illusion the most. So size is really important to this. Only the biggest objects are going to be in the foreground. As things get further towards the horizon, which is the second point, then they're going to get smaller. Now it seems such an obvious point when it's laid out like that, but sometimes it's surprising how many times that things need correcting to adjust for the size, for the relationship towards that horizon point. So it's a really important thing to always bear in mind, no matter what you're drawing, whether it be organic shapes, whether it is geometric shapes, you need to think about that relationship. Is it oversized for its position in relation to that horizon line? But it does extend also to clouds. Now, nothing I'm drawing here is particularly good. I'm just trying to get the point across to illustrate the idea. So as you get smaller shapes, perhaps on that horizon clouds, maybe they're stretched out clouds, but either way, they represent smaller shapes when they get nearer that horizon line. And as they get further up, they might get chunkier, they might be more broken, but they get thicker. So there's the first two elements. So we have size, so obviously things get smaller into the distance, or the elimination of super big shapes in the distance is the main objective, and that can extend to mountains. So if you did a big mountain here, in that distance, then you really have to think that that is going to be so vastly huge that it's an important element in your piece. Now, if you just didn't want to actually have something that is absolutely vast, maybe something more like this size for the mountains would work better. And it puts it in position, it's not as overbearing, it looks a little bit more naturalistic to the scene, 
they can still be vastly huge mountains, they're just quite a long way away. So as I've said, there are gonna be three fundamental elements to this creating distance, but there is also a fourth one that I'm going to add in a little later as well. So stick around for the fourth one. But the third one is the use of tone. So we've got our horizon line, and I'm going to do a series of just blobs, just initially, to represent a shift in tone that you may see. Now I'm keeping it really simple initially. When I do more of a, a demonstration about how to bring them all together a little later in the video, you'll see more complex shapes that this is applied to. I'm not suggesting any direction of the light just yet. I'm just illustrating the concepts that when things get nearer to you, we can push the tones further. And just the use of dark tone when it's really close to you creates a sense of distance when you have the absence of that dark tone. So anything that's in the distance, that darkness is going to completely disappear. So we're bringing all three of those elements together here, I guess, within this. Although it's a very simple thing just to demonstrate. And we've not got light in its correct place. So if we had a light source, then light would hit on this side and you get shadow on another side, obviously. So we're just trying to illustrate the idea of the three principles of size. Although size can be, you know, tricksy because sometimes you get very small objects that seem similar in shape even and to things that are in the distance but because they're close to you you know they could end up looking a very similar size so the thing in the distance could be really huge but it's very far away and the thing that's very close to you could be very small but it's very close to you so they might look similar in scale but as a general rule trees are going to look very small in the distance so if you were doing a series of pine trees in the distance you might only be able to see the spikes and not very much else. But then obviously as it gets closer to you, you're gonna see a much bigger version of it. Now, I'm not doing a detail pine tree, I'm just trying to illustrate the size difference. So within this tutorial, I'm only using the free 6B pencil within Procreate. But if you want to experiment with more textures, then you might wanna check out Brush Galaxy. It's a brilliant brush subscription website service with over 20,000 premium Procreate brushes. You can save over 90% of the cost by subscribing and paying monthly. And it's got tons of different categories such as portrait, pattern, texture, nature, and loads more. If you subscribe today, you get the first seven days free. You can unlock up to 12 brush packs for free, worth over $300. The links are in the comments and also the video description. So now I'm going to clear all of this image and I'm going to begin a demonstration about how to bring those all successfully together. And I'm going to introduce a fourth element into this as well. So in terms of the brush, I've still got it at the 50% size and 30% opacity. It's exactly the same, but I'm just going to start creating some organic shapes. So I do a lot of studies of trees and when I start just doodling, creating these kinds of images, then the tree shapes inevitably start coming out. So perhaps I ought to, before I get any further, is just put some kind of horizon line in there. Now it doesn't have to be detailed. Maybe we could have some kind of land feature off there as well. I'm not going to get bogged down in the detail of that. I'll just add a little bit of gray tone just to that. I'm really only interested in demonstrating the three principles and a fourth one later as well. So I'm starting off, like I was explaining, with some bigger shapes in the foreground. They're further away from that horizon line, so they're lower down in the scene. I'm using darker tones, but as part of the use of tone, actually, what I didn't mention already was that you're gonna get a greater contrast, and I think that's a really important element. So yes, you are going to get darker tones, but then next to that, you may also end up with what appears like super bright tones as well, super light tones. So if, if anything, it's actually the contrast between the light and dark in the foreground that really gives you that snappy contrast and brings it forward to your attention and really exaggerates the, the dark tone. Whereas when things go off in the distance, you get more of a muted dark tone. You may also have the light tones in there to be fair, but generally you're not gonna have that difference in contrast. And you'll see that a little later on in this demonstration. Now when I'm using tone, what I tend to do is start off with a light tone and then build it up more gradually. So another suggestion is that you do that. Now I was quite confident with the dark tones for some of these very foreground elements, but as I'm moving further back, I'm just gonna err on the side of slight caution 
use the lighter tones first and then build them up more gradually until I find a point at which it really conveys that sense of distance. So I'm just playing around with branch shapes and tree root shapes almost. In quite a surreal sense, just made up shapes. So it's quite scribbly. I'm not getting worried about neatness or accuracy because I'm just trying to convey, trying to get the point across, trying to just demonstrate how they can create an effect, how these three principles actually work. Now, if you really wanted to exaggerate the, the use of light and dark, then you might want to have the contrast being this different between something here and something here. But really what I need to do is reserve some of these kind of tones for things that are more middle distance, so more about in this region. So I probably will push this a little bit further, make it a little bit darker. Now, this fourth element that I was saying I was going to explain to you is actually texture and detail. So for example, if I'm drawing this shape and I'm doing it in the distance, then I'm not really going to bother getting into all these little shapes, all these little textures. Just representing the vague sense of the overall form is probably going to be enough for that in the distance. But because it's a lot closer, I'm just gonna spend a bit of time on the texture and the and detail. Now detail doesn't quite get the point across that I'm trying to explain, which is why I say texture really. It is detail but it's more than that. Because we're seeing a high difference between the light and dark, it means that you do notice all the little changes in surface texture. So if there's creases and shadows forming in small areas, you'll notice it more because the difference between the light and dark is greater. So add texture to these four ground elements. And then if you were to do something similar in the distance, and I'll create a similar -ish shape, so yes, it is further away. And so you're not going to necessarily see the same level as of de uh, uh, texture rather, but you could zoom in and you could spend time going into all those details. It's possible to do it, especially using digital. But what I'm saying is, I think it's actually sensible not to do that. Now, the, even the lines that I put in there initially just to, to generate that shape are probably a bit too dark. So what I'll do is I'll start with the pencil and I'll long press on the eraser, click on the eraser, and you can see it's on the same pencil setting now. I might need to change the size of the brush to suit, but I can get in there and I can just subdue with the same texture now, the specific lines that are just a bit too strong. Go back to my pencil. I try not to zoom in too much in these demonstrations, these tutorials, because especially with digital, you can really get lost in the zooming in and you can obsess over one corner for hours and then you zoom out and you realize you've got an absolute ton still to do. So. We try and keep these lessons relatively brief, get the overall ideas across so we don't tend to zoom in. So I'm going to repeat these ideas now. So just as I was explaining before, we're further away, so we're higher up on that horizon line. We're using less of this dark tone, less of the contrast between the light, uh, the light and the dark, but we're also getting less texture and less detail. And obviously the size is lesser too. So you can see some of these arches, similar kinds of forms, but it's further away, so we're not seeing the same scale. It's very easy to overdo the dark tones in the distant shapes, so you just need to be mindful of the fact that you really don't want to push it too far. Having said that, if you still want the distant things to be visible and noticeable, you might just need to find the right balance between how dark you're going to push it into the distance. And it also depends on how atmospheric you want your scene to be. So if it's gonna be like a really misty, foggy environment, then it's not gonna take very much distance for things to completely disappear into that mist. But if it's a super bright, clear, sunny environment, then perhaps some of those dark tones will last a little bit longer into the distance. So again, you're gonna to have to choose the tone difference that is relevant for the kind of atmosphere that you want to create. Now, another element of this is that really foreground shapes will seem to just cross between this land area and the sky area more naturally. They're closer to you, so they're gonna really just occupy a greater part of your canvas. And this sense of it just stretching between one area of your composition and another seems quite an easy thing for a foreground element to do. 
Now, obviously, if that's going to be happening in the distance, then it doesn't really make sense as much because if this extends, for example, from this point in the landscape and extends all the way up, then you're actually representing something that's way more vastly huge in scale, in height, than something that might start from here because it's starting near the horizon. And so for it to reach the top of the composition of that top of the frame represents a much greater height and scale than it does when it starts down here. So just be mindful of taking things too high up into the sky when they start over here. Generally, like we've talked about scale in general, it's going to be shorter, it's going to be smaller. So it might be that something that represents the same height as this might only be that tall in the distance. So again, as I was explaining before, I just need to push some of these dark tones a little bit further for these more foreground elements. It's just going to really help sell the illusion that these are definitely more distant. So I want some kind of medium level atmosphere for this scene. So certainly it is subduing the things in the distance. It's going to strip away the dark tones in the distant forms, but I don't want it to be too different really between here and here. There's some difference, but the main difference is going to be reserved for those distant forms. I'm not creating a strong light source in this scene. It's generally quite a diffuse light that I'm going for. So rather than creating absolute shadows, I'm just I'm creating the overall sense that there's a light emanating from maybe an overcast day. So there's lots of cloud in the sky and the light is just, like I say, getting diffused everywhere. So there's a general sense of some shadow on the underside of forms and light on the top. But other than that, I'm not really going to get too specific. So maybe a slight shadow on the floor area immediately underneath but I'm not worrying really. So we have something that's more further away here maybe I could do a couple of suggestions of things so you can hardly notice perhaps what they are in the very distance so I'm just pressing on lightly there and then as we come slightly further in closer to this we can start to just see some more detail maybe and then we've got a good space here so let's do something that's between this point and that point Again, this can extend up into the, the frame, into the canvas, but it's unlikely to reach the top in the same way that this foreground element is. So I can have it reaching up, but I'm going to just stop it short of going all the way to the top. And it just helps with the illusion of making things a little bit further away. So I'm really pressing on lightly for these background elements now. So these distant forms, I'm not applying anything like the same pressure. When they get nearer the horizon, they're not gonna have any height, any pressure, any detail. They're all just gonna be clustered together perhaps. Perhaps it appears like they're closer together because things compress together when they get further away. And perhaps we'll just have something creeping in here. Maybe from there, in fact. So we have these foreground elements. So like I was saying, you would have a little bit more detail, a little bit more emphasis on the textures, on the contrast between the light and dark. So whenever you've got foreground elements, you must spend a bit longer on the detail on those textures. But don't get obsessed in zooming in to everything. I mean. I'm, I tend to do that a little bit, but even within obsessive levels of detail, there's still room for being more vague for distant things. If this is a, how you're going to look at your overall composition, there's no point spending six hours on a small area like this. I do lots of work in this manner where I'm just creating things from my imagination. I have all of my personal work, which uses a lot more color and high definition detail 
over at my new website, which has been constructed by an amazing website builder, Shaban Idrisu. So in the video description is a link to my new website and the website of Shaban as well, because you might wanna go and check out his work and consider asking him to do some work for you as well. He is really awesome. Also in the video description are links to things like my Facebook group, my Instagram. You can join me there, share versions of my tutorials. If you have a go and you're really pleased with the results, then you can share those with me there. Also my Patreon, if you're able to support me, I'm trying to, well, I'm aiming to be able to do this full time at some point in the future. I am a high school teacher, which means that this is only something that I can do as an extra on top of what I do during the day at high school. At some point in the future, I'd like to be able to make this my full-time job and teach all of my lessons online for people all over the world, really. So if you're able to support me with that venture, then Patreon link is also in the video description. Okay, so just to review and recap the, the main lessons that we've been focusing on today. So if we have a natural environment, we don't have geometric shapes. We can't use a strict vanishing point in the way that we would do with traditional perspective drawings. What we can do is use that horizon line as a judging of distance so that anything that appears closer to that horizon line, whether it's on the ground or in the sky, is going to be something that's a distant element. So if it's lower down in your scene, further away from that horizon line, it's going to be something that's closer to us. When it gets closer to that horizon line in the distance, it's going to be further away. I haven't added clouds in this particular scene or any sky elements, but it works the same way as we've shown in the foreground land elements. The next thing, and quite an obvious thing, is size. So anything in the distance is going to have to be dramatically smaller. Now people get this and understand this, perhaps don't really push the difference far enough. So if it really is in that distance, it, um, it can't be big. It needs to be, you know, all the heights and all the size needs to be reserved for things that are closer to us, unless that distant element is absolutely vast and that is the point of it. The third element is the use of tones. As you can see here, I've reserved all the real black tones for those foreground elements and it's whisked off and been stripped back so there's no dark tones in that distant area at all, really. And in terms of the use of tone, it's the use of contrast. So you might see elements here where it's pretty much all been greyed out. So even the, the lighter tones can be stripped out too. And it can all be smudged together into a general mid to light grey kind of tone. So the dark blacks and the lightest whites can be here in the foreground. And in the distance is more of a just homogenized gray blob. And the fourth element that I said is the level of detail. Obviously, it's the texture. You're only gonna reserve all those little details and textures in the sense of a difference between dark here and light here for these really foreground elements. Now, mine's pretty vague and it's difficult to tell exactly what's going on, but I'm just creating a, an overall effect of distance there for you. So we have relation to the horizon line, nearer the horizon line is distant, size, smaller things towards that horizon line, lighter things towards that horizon line, and less detail on that horizon line as well. I hope that's been useful. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, do check out all my others. I do tons of color painting tutorials with more detail than this, in fact, where I guide you step-by-step step how to get to that end result. This has been a general overview, but my other lessons get into more detail and you end up with an end result that you can copy along with me step-by-step. Step. So if you've enjoyed, please make sure to press the subscribe, hit that bell notification, check all the links that are down in the video description, and I hope to catch you back here again soon. See you later.